So what happens after death? What happens if I die unaware? What happens if I die aware? So once again I want to warn you, if I go into these spaces, I am going into areas which are not in your experience. So the only option that's left to you is whatever I say, to believe it or to disbelieve it. I don't like to put people in such a… It's, it's an obscene situation, compelling you to either believe me or not believe me. I think it's obscene to, you know, to push people into that situation where you have to believe me or you don't believe me, you know. It is the same situation as you are with me or against me. It is… <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> But now that you ask the question, what happens? See, the most important thing for you, if you really want to know, if you just want to listen to your story, that's different. If you really want to know, the most important thing is that you must know what is happening to life now, isn't it? You're here. What is happening to this life now? How is it happening? If you Strive to know this and if you know this, you will know everything. If you know just this one, you will know everything that's worth knowing in the existence. That's how it is. You just have to know this, that's all. If you know this piece of life, you will know everything that's worth knowing in the existence. That's all you need to know. That is why for ages people have been saying, know thyself or whatever. People have been saying that, isn't it? So how to know yourself? Everything we, that we are doing is just to set up the necessary fundamentals so that you will be able to know. If I tell you, you are soul, you are beautiful, you are love, you know people are making statements, God is love, how do you know? How do you know? No, my Krishna has told me, my priest has told me, somebody else has told me, all that is fine. But how do you know they know? How do you know that Krishna knows? I'm asking you. See, I'm not saying this with any disrespect or anything towards them. But how do you know? How do you know that Krishna knows or Buddha knows or Jesus knows or anybody knows? How do you know? What parameters do you have? to check them out and th say, okay, this guy knows. How do you know? The life they live. Huh? The life they live. What kind of life did they live? The examples, of the, the, what they demonstrated in their life and the examples that they set for people. See, Krishna is 3,500 years ago. Gautama the Buddha is two thousand five hundred years ago, Jesus is two thousand years ago, that's a lot of time. People, whether a Jesus or a Buddha or Krishna, these people live wonderful life, there's no question about it. But how do you know what they're saying is the truth? What have you got in you to tell you that? Now, I will tell you, Love is God. You feel little love in your heart, you feel wonderful. So you think, I know God? No. It's a wrong conclusion you're making. Now, people are always saying love is God. Please look at this sincerely. Love is a human emotion. Human beings are capable of being loving, isn't it so? Are they? Are you capable of love? Yes. Why people who l have no love in their heart, they are the people who exported love to heaven. Why are you saying love is God? It's… it's very much a human possibility, isn't it so? Yes or no? Human beings can love immensely, isn't it? If they are willing, if they are not prejudiced, a human being is capable of tremendous amount of love. Why should it come from heaven? It doesn't come from heaven even now. You… if you have a dog at home, 
A dog is extremely loving, isn't it? Yes? Licks you up head to toe, isn't it so out of his love? Doesn't he? Dog is love, no question about it. God is love, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying he's not, but you don't know, isn't it so? See, this is not in any kind of disrespect or any kind of desecration of what is there, but this is if you want to grow, you must start where you are. Otherwise, we'll believe so many things. But if somebody… you meet somebody who believes something totally different, these two wonderful beliefs will clash. Uh, isn't this happening? Two great religions are all the time clashing and killing. Don't think these people are killing some extremists and this and that. They are the real religious people because they believe. You should have seen this, I don't know if any of you saw that. Before uh, United States attacked uh, Afghanistan, all these Taliban leaders, you know, you've seen them how they are? They got nice big turbans like this, long beards and nice guys <laughs> Really, there's something very… they're… they're terrible innocence, I'm telling you. They firmly… just before that the Buddha statues were blasted, that was the time. So because the attack was imminent, they called for a press conference, about eight of them the press conference, all international press asking them all kinds of questions. What are you doing? You blew up this, uh, you know, this Buddha statue, you're treating your woman like this, you're torturing these people, that, this, this. Whatever you say, those guys are so innocently coming out and saying, see, in our holy book, Quran, this chapter, da, 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 this is what it says. So we're just doing that. When you look at them, they're genuinely saying it. They're not they are not pretending people because they are staking their life. See, these people are not just making up things because they one hundred percent believe it. Otherwise, why would they stake their lives, isn't it? Isn't it so? Why would any man stake his life for something that doesn't mean anything to him? It means a lot to them. They firmly believe this is it. But you think it's utter nonsense, isn't it? But it is not so for him. So what I'm saying is, let's not go by belief systems, let's explore life. Whatever, you know, initially, this… this is also there, at different phases of their life, they said different things and out of context it can mean many things which are completely out. Initially, during the marketing phase of his life, Jesus talked about taking everybody to heaven. Said. My God is in heaven, my Father in heaven, I'll take you there and this and that. Once sufficient number of people got interested, he said, the kingdom of God is within you. Yes? Yes or no? He did, right? He turned around and he said, the kingdom of God is within you. Everybody was thinking he's going to take them up somewhere. But he turned around and said, the kingdom of God is within you. If it's within you, all you need is a method and a way to turn inward, isn't it? Not about going somewhere. So, whatever he might have said, it could be totally out of context. After two thousand years, people might have twisted and turned and put it completely out of context. You take a piece of what somebody has said without taking the whole context of what he could have said, it could be completely meaning something else and it can always happen to everything that everybody has said. So they lived wonderful lives, no question about that. But still in your experience, till you know, it is still a story, isn't it? Yes? A beautiful story, an inspiring story, but still a story. Stories can entertain, entertain you, stories can inspire you, stories cannot deliver you. Only… only if you turn inward, if you find your kingdom of God, only then it delivers you, not otherwise. For more on Sadhguru, visit www.ishafoundation.org.